Hey folks, it's time for another episode of the Daily KJTV. Back by the popular demand, we got Nate Smoyer on the line. Um, he is so blazing hot that Comcast <laughs> might not be able to even endure how hot his advice is today. Video may not hold up. Uh, we might melt the interwebs. Uh, but we got Mr. Smoyer on the line, coast to coast. How you doing, Nate? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Um, my, my dog is in the background chomping down on a squeaker. Hey, your dog's out. so excited to be with you. That's why I'm excited to be with you as well. So, hey, so the word on the street that the reputation that precedes you is that you are the uh, LinkedIn hacker. That you, <laughs> you are basically Mr. Networking. You've figured out how to actually use it to your advantage. I thought I'd pull you on here. Uh, what's what's one thing that uh, most people are not looking to LinkedIn for? What what are you doing that's working these days? I prospect. I prospect every day. That's the On that's LinkedIn. the that's the one thing I do that most people won't. So it is a social network, right? Like I think I think the stats almost sixty percent of LinkedIn are logging in every day. It's no longer that like just repository. For your no, no, it's not, and it's not just a place to go to get a job. There's a lot of junk that comes on there. I mean, you want the easiest hack for LinkedIn? Here it yeah. is. Yeah, put CEO and founder in your title <laughs> um, and, and, and you'll add 50 new connections tomorrow. Now, most of them will be salespeople promising to, to scale your company. Honestly, it, it was amazing to me to see that uh, change. How many people want to talk to me? I think the easiest thing is though, you just have to know who you want to connect with and make a small effort daily and do it. Yeah, the, I mean, outside of that, then... Well, here's a question for me, right? So for me, okay. I've been very conservative. Right. I've been only connecting with people that I've actually met, seen, or Lame. know in real life. Lame. Lame. <laughs> Lame. So am I just supposed to like indiscriminately just accept anybody and everybody? Because I heard this other side is that once you no. connect with somebody, they have access to your contact information, all that stuff that you put up there. I don't want anybody so everybody to have my direct cell phone number or address, et cetera, that I've put up in so there. So don't put it up there. Okay, so but I, let's but I have, people, people have my access to my, all right, let me, let me just tell you why you need to have access to People need to have access to that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, just, the, just the other day, I got an email from a company and we are in discussions about forming a partnership with the technology that they want to leverage to reach real estate companies. Okay. And you know, it's a technology that enables them to produce videos at scale directly from text data and you know your website content and all that kind of good stuff. And it was because they saw they were like, hey, we found this guy. He's in real estate and real estate tech, and and they knew how to get a hold of me. And they literally just booked the, booked the call. Like I didn't ever even talk to them. I just when they got the email that I had a conversation coming up in a week and a note about what the conversation was going to be and it was just books and that's so, just i'm discoverable I've, okay so i've got a incoming queue of requests for connections of like 250 or more that right. i've just been ignoring do i just accept 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 and no. is that what am i supposed to do no just go through and accept who you want to accept but i mean it's got to add value to you too so if they're in the industry they're doing interesting things that i want i understand right. to accept those indiscriminately just to don't yeah, message so, them, just say accept. Yeah, so I mean, you kind of look at it like, okay, could they be a customer of mine? Could I be a customer of theirs? Do, does someone that I know need this? Or do they know someone that I need to know? I mean, if can, I guess- Can they add to value that, to your network basically? Yeah, if you went down that litmus test, it would, you'd be able to answer that question really quickly. So I prune pretty frequently though. That's, I, I think that's probably the one thing that I, I don't think most people realize, like I prune pretty frequently. But I also, you just have to, you have to make a daily ha ha uh, habit okay. of it. That's so the, there's, a, there's another function where you can actually follow people, but like it's not specifically just, um, right. you know, connecting with them. What's the difference? When should you follow someone versus connecting with them? Well, some, some people are so popular, you have to follow them. Because I think after 30,000 connections or something like that, it, it switches over. Um, some people will build a second LinkedIn page. I think that's what Rick Warren did. The, the follow, I don't really understand the follow thing. I just send the connection request because then it by default follows the person. Okay. So if they accept it, that's cool. And if they don't, that's fine. I mean, I don't get butthurt about it. <laughs> okay. And then in terms of prospecting, you are basically 
actively sending out requests to connect with other people on a daily basis as well? Yeah, so I'm always looking to connect with company founders first and then other leading executives and then other uh, leading marketers or like sales directors at those companies. And then because I know exactly who I'm going after and who I want to talk to, then all of my content and all of my efforts are extremely focused. It's it, because I, I already know the qualifications that I'm seeking after. Now, there's a lot of people that just randomly will then send messages to me prospecting. Um, what's the best way to do that? How do you do outreach once you find people of value, people you want to connect with, people that could be, you know, um, either a customer or a connection or do something for you? Well, what do you do? What, what's the message that you actually send them? Well, it depends. So I have a podcast. I level the, I leverage the podcast to have discussions with who I want to talk to. So I shared this the other day in a group of other media buyers that I'm connected with. And we were all talking about our sales processes. And, you know, I just shared, I was like, I actually don't spend any time pursuing or talking to people outside of my intended ideal client. You know, if anyone else wants to talk to me, they're full, they're more than happy to, you know, go for it, message me. But so all my conversations and, and sales calls are actually, it's the same call I would have on a sales call, except it's a, now a podcast interview. And so the barriers that you typically have that you're trying to push past on a sales call don't exist. And we have an opportunity then to actually break down some barriers in our conversation, build up some rapport. And if no rapport really gets built in a podcast interview, you're not likely to do anything with those people anyway. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you know, if you do get some rapport, then you can ask more questions and you can dig a little bit further. And it's, you know, during the podcast, I uncover their needs, the motivations, desires. And it's really easy for me at that moment to, to see, hey, is this even a fit for me to work with this company or not, despite them being, you know, what I've initially identified as a target, you know, client. And there's no harm, no foul in this because now I get the benefit of when we publish the episode you know, then they share on LinkedIn that they got a chance to talk with me, which is amazing because it's me, you know, asking for their time. It's Nate's, yes. <laughs> and, it's more, and, it's and, more. Right. And they're validating me in the industry. So it's a revolving, it's just a continual cycle or snowball effect of every week, someone else in the industry has validated time spent with me or you know my skill sets or my industry knowledge um which then just leads to the next opportunity and this Absolutely. is why i think in the last year i think i've interviewed um i think i've interviewed four separate uh people who in their career have done over a billion dollars in sales wow that's great that's great access yeah and in my framework the art of engagement from art um interview based publishing which is what i call the oprah program right? oprah is powerful not because of who she is. Oprah's powerful because of who she puts in an empty chair next to her. She's curating those conversations and establishing her authority, transferred authority by those she actually interviews, the influencers that she's interviewing. Um, I think that's exactly what you, I'm seeing the same exact thing. That's why I'm running multiple podcasts and it's very easy to make an ask uh, to be a guest on it. And I guess it, it just lends to their almost like ego in a way that, hey, someone's interested in you want to interview you we want to share your success and you're basically platforming them so um yeah it's great to hear that what one any last tip in terms of LinkedIn? what's something anything that you think that people are using LinkedIn in the wrong way or what, what about groups what about videos what about all these other things that LinkedIn is trying to offer well number one connect with me on LinkedIn at Nate Moyer uh that's probably the first thing you should do to help your LinkedIn <laughs> career nice shout out <laughs> Um, you know, tagging people in your post is good. Uh, don't get too crazy with it. Video does really well. But one thing I noticed recently, and I don't know the logic, but I can only guess the logic for these two things. Number one, um, you can now tag people in photos on LinkedIn. Yeah. And right. number two, you can also enter in alternate text. Now, a lot of people don't know what alternate text is for, but alternate text is leveraged by search engines for indexing And so um, this is something that several social media sites can help Instagram is offering this. Uh, I think it's good on the, the desktop platform. But by entering in that alternate text, you're gonna enhance your SEO on top of a platform that's already you know a top 50 in the world. Okay. So are you are you entering alternate text that includes people's names or is it yes. topical with keywords? No. 
names and companies. I want to be very pointed. There's a lot of, so, you know, for those who don't know, I'm in real estate tech and there's a lot of nuance in real estate. So I don't, I don't want to appeal to the mass. Uh, I, I, do, I, want, I, I do have, uh, I came up with my Facebook timeline the other day. Will it burn YouTube channel? It's still live. I just never actually published any videos. But maybe we'll change that this year. No guarantees. But, um, yeah, so I think that's a big thing. Also, people don't take advantage of their company pages. So I have two, um, two posts on my um, podcast page, which is built out like a company page that, you know, we shared that someone was on the show interviewed and we tagged them in it. I think both of them, you know, something like two or 3000 impressions Wow! Uh, on, on each post. But they were talking about a podcast page that, you know, is relatively new. No one goes and seeks out to follow a podcast page on LinkedIn. I think I only have like seven actual followers at the moment. So you should go follow Tech Nest on LinkedIn. But um, yeah, it was like a few thousand impressions on both those posts. And it was because I tagged those people in it, but then they reshared it and it just kept pushing, you know, more people to it. And, you know, the good thing is, again, like it's network effects, right? So every one of their people who liked it, I go and look up who they are because, you know, if if I say I featured you on my podcast and then your friends see that and they're like, congrats, Kenny. And then I go look at them and like, Hey, I want to know who that person is. Well, I just featured your friend. Like your Uh, friend just validated me. So you're already wanting to connect. Right there. We, we did this interview to get to this point. That is the super duper advanced tip that I think no one is doing. And that is taking stuff that you post and then t- looking at the people who like those posts. And, is that advanced? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think people are doing that. I don't I think people in my are. sleep, Kenny. <laughs> right, so you have a post, um, and you might have 10 people who like it. You might have 500 right. people like it. But going right. down the list of who actually clicked like for that post um, is going to be a, a treasure chest that you can actually go through. And it's even better when – someone shares your post on their network and their friends like it. And then you're now able to go through and look up. Look them yeah. Up. And so like, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a hint. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call it out. I'm ahead of the, ahead of the game here. So the former CEO of Keller Williams. So this is not like a local Keller Williams. We're talking about the global Keller Williams. Big shop. He's a former CEO. He now runs a different startup liked one of my personal posts the other day because of the guest. And so you got to like take a step and think, you know, step back and think about this. This is the, the second, well was, but it's now the second largest brokerage in the world by agent count interacting with my LinkedIn content. And so now I can reach out to him and say, Hey, I saw you saw, or I noticed you saw my interview with so-and-so. And I, I, and I took a look at the startup you're running. I think it's a great fit for my show. I'd love to have you on. If you'd be down for a quick call to connect, I can share more with you about the show and how it works. I love that. So you're reaching out because you saw them like your post. Typically, that would be a creepy move. But what you're doing is you're adding context and you're actually <laughs> using it to make the connection. Right. I love that you yeah. did, that second part is necessary so that you don't come off as a stalker. I saw that you liked my post. <laughs> yes. Um, so I love that. I love the fact that what, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I noticed what you're doing. I love it. It fits in with what I'm doing. And let's connect and make that connection uh, happen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's like 201, 301 level um, in terms of LinkedIn. That's it? I love it's it. It's not 500, <laughs> not 700. <laughs> Well, the pressure's on. We'll have to come bring you back on another episode. But thank you to today uh, for getting to that super advanced tip. Um, we'll, we'll definitely have to get you back here. But thank you again for that. I'm going to actually go back on LinkedIn. I'm going to like Tech Nest, your podcast. Go look up that company page. And for everybody else, go try to connect with Nate Smoyer. Hopefully, he'll reciprocate. Um, and you can check out more stuff here on our channel here on the Daily KJ TV.